What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and today we're gonna to talk about water cooling your graphics card. But we're gonna talk about doing it the easy way, or easier way, and a lot cheaper obviously than using you know complete custom water cooling loop with big expensive blocks and stuff. We're gonna talk about a product here available from NZXT. This is the successor to the popular G10, and I've been asked to do something like this for a long time by the audience, so we're finally doing it. And we're gonna be taking the X42 all-in-one 140 millimeter water cooling loop and attaching that to our GPU. That's essentially all those hybrid cards on the market are. They're just all-in-one water cooling loops that are fixed onto the GPU, and then they call them, you know, obviously water-cooled GPUs, because they are. But today we're gonna talk about this, whether or not it works, and is it worth doing? Cooler Master's Master Key Pro series of keyboards offer 16.7 million color RGB, genuine cherry switches, a variety of sizes, as well as surface-mounted controls allowing full customization without the need for standalone software. Learn more by following the link down below. So this is what you get with the X42. You get the 140 millimeter radiator and pump. You get the USB cable, mounting adapters, and of course, 140 millimeter fan. Now the G12 is a lot more simple. It's nothing more than a bracket, just a regular old bracket that's designed to allow your pump to mount to the GPU, of course. You've got a 92 millimeter fan that blows down on your power delivery to try and help keep that cool. And of course, your mounting brackets here for both uh, NVIDIA and AMD. So this is designed to work with, I think they advertise 30 different all-in-one water cooling loops. You don't have to actually use theirs. Obviously they sent it, you know, both of these together as like a package for me to check out. Uh, it also works with a wide range of GPUs. Go to their website to see what they work with, but I, it looked like it worked with everything from like the 6000 series AMD up to present. Same thing with uh, Nvidia, all the way back to like, I think it was the 200 series all the way up till now, maybe even older. Don't quote me on that, look at their website. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna install this today on my EVGA for the Win 2. It's a 1080. It's the first card with the ICX. And the reason why I'm doing that is I wanna see whether or not we are gonna be doing ourselves a disservice with things like cooling, power delivery, and memory. Because here's the thing. Most graphics cards today, and pretty much all of them actually today, have heat sinks that are contacting the power delivery as well as the memory, allowing active cooling. So as the air blows through the graphics card, it's also cooling those components as well. When you do something like this, all you have is the pump touching the GPU core, and then you have this bland, this bland, this fan that is blowing down on bare PCB components, which are not going to be as effective as allowing the heat to transfer to something like a heat sink. So allowing me to actually monitor those temperatures, thank goodness the new EVGA uh, ICX technology has nine sensors. We can see obviously our GPU temperatures, our memory temperatures, and our power delivery. So I'll be able to see if there's any sort of negative effect by cooling our GPU, but then leaving those components out by removing the heatsink. So right now I've actually had this test going for, I don't know, at least a half hour. Uh, we're running a Heaven Benchmark 1440p, 8x MSAA, tessellation and all that is turned on. Our GPU core is at 74, that's actually pretty good. But our power delivery looks like 69, 69, 68, 72, and 73. So a range of 69 to 73. Let's call that an average of 71, right? Is that math? Yeah, so we'll just call 71 as the average. And then our memory is ranging from 54, 61, and 73. I, the closer that memory chip is to the, that, the power delivery, so the memory on that side is hotter, that's why there's a neighboring component uh, being warmed up by power delivery. So that's our baseline. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this, install it, and compare. That's called compare and contrast. It's science.
So far we've got everything installed, but as you can see, we were getting into Windows, but then after a few seconds, it would just go into a black screen. And after a few restarts, reinstalled the driver. This is what I'm getting now. So I'm not sure if maybe it's on there too tight. I don't know. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take it apart and let's see what it looks like in there. Make sure the thermal compound's good. Make sure we're not crushing it. Yeah, I'm not, well, when you've got something that's meant to be universal, I don't know if that's something that could have happened. So let's find out. What I wanna check too is see what's happening with the thermal compound. I wanna see how well it's spreading. There's actually another channel out there, a, a smaller YouTuber by the name of Joe's Tech. I actually watched his video on this before doing this because he did this. Um, and he mentioned that there was a thermal paste spreading issue with the pre-applied stuff. I don't know if there's maybe some sort of physical damage that might've occurred. Oh, well, okay, that's a problem. We obviously got zero thermal uh, transfer there. Now, I did put the faceplate on here because I wanted to maintain the faceplate cooling as best I could for the VRM and the memory. It is actually mounted though against the PCB. So the PCB is not causing an issue here where maybe the bracket isn't mounted all the way down. It is indeed touching the PCB. So if you get in there real close, Nick, you can see that if you look back here, there are no gaps there. So it is indeed touching the PCB. And let me go ahead and stop you right there. What's up guys, Editing Jay here. Haven't been here in a while. The smarter of the two Jays. Recording Jay is dumb. Because while reviewing this footage, it's actually pretty damn obvious why it wasn't working. You see these four tabs right here? Yeah, these four tabs are actually contacting the bottom of the pump, which is keeping it from making any contact whatsoever from the GPU die. So if I had actually had my Dremel on hand, like a, you know, self-respecting modder of any sort would, then I could have just hacked these four tabs off and everything would have been fine. So anyway, disregard what I say moving forward about not being able to use the front plate or the back plate. You could, but uh, we still got some pretty interesting results in this video, so keep watching. So clearly what we were seeing there was the GPU going, please stop trying to murder me to death. But what I'm gonna do right now with just these two screws which are tightened all the way down is I want to look and see what kind of spread we're getting now. So yeah, as you can see, we're still not getting, we're still not actually getting any spread on there. Well, the only other thing I can think now is take the face plate and the back plate off. It is touching the face plate a little bit. If I actually had a Dremel here, do I have my Dremel here? No, we took it home, huh? Crap, because I could have Dremeled that out slightly so it fits down there a little bit. All right, the good news is I didn't kill it. I was afraid I might've killed it by forcing it to turn on over and over and over again when it was clearly not getting any cooling whatsoever. And then that white line is never a good thing. But check this out, we are overclocked. The exact same overclock settings though that were on the air-cooled test uh, the difference is it's staying at 2114 megahertz because our core is staying at 47C while overclocked. So there's no complaints there. But obviously my concerns about the VRM and memory cooling were unfounded. Even though we lost the front plate and the back plate with all these heat pads spreading out the heat on this face plate, and we lost the pin fin design and all the direct airflow on there. Uh, even though we just have a 92 millimeter fan blowing directly on bare PCB components, check this out. Our memory is at 49, 58, and 64. So that came down quite a bit. And I'll put up what the previous temperatures were in case you forgot. So that came down quite a bit from where we were on air cooled. And then our power delivery, look at that, 58, 62, 59, 65, and 60. So although it didn't come down a lot, it came down nonetheless. We removed cooling components, just added bare airflow, and it came down, so that's a good thing. Anyway, here's the point of this. If you have a graphics card that you like and you wanna water cool it and you don't want to spend the hundreds and hundreds of dollars it takes to do a custom loop, you can do a solution like this. You can take the G12 and you can put your favorite AIO on there, uh, maybe you have one laying around, or buy one of the compatible AIOs, head, head to their website to make sure that it's compatible before you go. There's like 30 that are compatible with this and you can attach it to your graphics card and get a massive reduction in temperatures on something that's already performing really good, like the air cooler that you get with the For The Win 2 card. Yeah, you can even Im improve upon that. The downside is it doesn't look as pretty because there's no backplate on there, but we could have made that work if I had my Dremel here. We could have Dremeled out the corners and opened that hole up more and then it wouldn't have interfered with the bracket. That's something I would recommend doing uh, for yourself if you're comfortable with that. Um, the other thing too is speaking of For The Win graphics cards, this is a 1080 For The Win 2. It's the ICX card we took a look at last year. But if you want your very own graphics card, 
I'm giving away right now a GTX 1080 Ti for the win three. This is EVGA's triple fan solution. Again, has ICX technology. Uh, we did a review on that. You guys can check it out here. Um, I'm giving one of these away. So just make sure you subscribe to the channel. In the description of the video I'm linking, you will see all of the information on how to enter and uh, when we're gonna be announcing the winner on both Twitter and a video. But anyway, yeah, you guys can get your very own. So there it is. You guys tell me what you think. It's been running now for, I don't know, about a half hour or so. And I mean, it's not the prettiest thing to look at. Uh, the, the perspective you would look at it in a case would look better than I'm looking at it here on this upright test bench. But hey, it's water cooled and it's performing well. And we're still running at 2114 megahertz. Check that, look, look at that, Nick. It didn't throttle at all. Nice, steady core speed, 2114, man. Can't get those kinds of speeds with the 1080 Ti, but this is still a faster card. Anyway, guys, time to go. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. I'm glad I didn't kill it, though. Seriously, I would've been sad.